Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's talk about another entry here. This one based on one of your past suggestions. This one is almost two years old, so I definitely, I mean, it goes to show that I definitely go back and look at some of the way past suggestions to see if there's anything that I might have missed. So, proof again, if you haven't seen your suggestion talked about just yet, just hold on and then eventually I will get to it. And it follows the continue theme involving some of my past videos some of our recent ones about the devil there was the seven gates of hell the one I just did that choke that showcased these gates if you follow them essentially you'll go straight to the devil himself and then there was the um, the 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 devil's tramping ground that reportedly had a location involving the devil meditating on how to do his evil ways this one has to do with a similar theme but in this case a person somebody who sold their soul to the devil and then because of it ended up dying soon thereafter it's 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 a classic hallmark the classic deal with the devil if you will uh, regarding this notion but yes it has to do with this uh, musician you're looking at him now his name is Rob Robert Johnson, probably considered the most influential blues music musician of all time, and it has to do with the purported urban legend involving him selling his soul to the devil in order to gain the mastery of his guitar. But yes, here's all the information associated with this urban legend. So who is Robert Johnson? Well, he was a young man that died early. And, and I say young. I mean, in this case, he was like in his late 20s when he ended up passing away. But before he did so, in his short time period, he was able to create enough works, even if there was just a small bit, still enough works to influence blues and then other musicians up to this very day. So not much is known about his early life I'm sure that there's like some really detailed info that people have been, have been trying to find because stuff like this even to this day like people are still researching his life and trying to find more information I was reading something involving even a reported photograph of him just a standard photograph has been analyzed scrutinized uh, researched because this is how important he is to the world of blues so no no doubt that, that as the years go by there'll be more info that comes out but in any case, in his young life, he decided at some point that he was not going to be working on the farm or wherever he was with his mom and his dad. In this case, being born in 1911, he grew up there on a plantation. He said he was more interested in music than in farming. But what was interesting to note is that he didn't necessarily play the guitar in a good fashion like it seemed to annoy all those people around that area in fact there was a quote that I found about his playing back then that people would just go and say why don't you go out and make that boy put that thing down involving like asking his father um, you know to, to tell his son to his boy you know to put that thing away he's driving everybody crazy because of how bad he played it but still Robert Johnson didn't care like he just kept practicing as best as he could he didn't want to necessarily again work in, in that farm and so he ran away it, the way the story goes he went either to Arkansas or someplace else, although I think it was most likely Arkansas, to try to learn what he could. Here's where the urban legend go, though, takes over. And about six months later, he returned, and much to the surprise of everyone, he was suddenly a, a bona fide master at the guitar. So in six months, he went from somebody that was severely annoying everyone with his um, with his with his guitar playing. And now in this case, when he came back, he was the undisputed master of the guitar. I mean, this was he was like spellbinding people with how well he did, even though he was a little shy, though, too, because apparently um, reading some of his information it, it's, uh, he would play and he would play either on street corners or he would play in small places but when he did so he liked he was like really really shy like he was someone that would either not look at people or he would do so but in a very secluded manner whatever was the case though like he like people definitely acknowledged though what he could do and then eventually he was able to record some stuff here in Texas it seemed like this was in the in mid 1930s or so and it was at that point that he recorded some songs I was trying to find though some information like how much he recorded like it seemed like he recorded 
some songs, like a good number of songs, including some different tracks or versions of those tracks, uh, like alternate versions of them. But I couldn't quite find out like if he recorded a good number of albums or if it were the songs themselves. If someone could point that out on the comments, that'd be really, really good to share. But... It seemed like right when he was on the cusp of being able to to take advantage of this this stuff, like of his of his of his of growing fame, he ended up passing away at a very young age again, around 27 or so. And the way the story goes, um, he suddenly just passed away. There was theories related to it, like people saying that either a he flirted with someone, like the wife of some man, and then that man poisoned him, or he was killed by that man through another manner, or um, he. He was just basically like uh, killed in other methods, but it seems like in, in, in some of the research that people have been doing that uh, his death is most likely caused to syphilis because one of the people that knew him within the past, within the last few days of his life stated that it seemed that that's the kind of disease that he had and even now to this day there is mysterious circumstances as to where he's even buried there's around three can you count them three reported sites of his grave so so no, nobody knows exactly which one of those three houses his body if they if it even does but it goes to show again the you know how mysterious this man is even after death so he very little information about him during his life and then very little information like his young life and then very little information about him uh, essentially learning and being so so-called master of the guitar and then finally even to his death and even his grave still very mysterious very little Little information tied along to that but that leads back to the urban legend there was that six month gap where he went from being a novice to all of a sudden being the undisputed master of the guitar and that and eventually and it seemed like it was sometime during the 60s so uh, you know quite a number of years after his death it there was the idea that this occurred somewhere along the way and you have to tie in a very famous song that he did called crossroad blues I think that was one of those songs where like with other artists it didn't take off then but it took off afterward that this song the lyrics on it don't say directly but at the same time don't say like mostly indirectly they allude to the fact that he was at a crossroad and that he met some kind of darkness there and then sometime in the 60s I think it was, as I was looking at information mid 60s or mid 70s somebody was able to report during that time period that that's where he essentially sold his soul to the devil it was at this crossroads that he met in this case uh, the, the, the devil was described as a black man like a very large black man he picked up that guitar from Johnson because uh, it seemed like Johnson at the time was trying to hitchhike he was at a low point in his life he still couldn't play the guitar he wasn't even even able to find a ride like this is all just culminating all these bad things all at once and then that's when this large black man suddenly appeared and then when that happened the black man took his guitar tuned it played a little bit on it played a few songs is the way the, the urban legend goes gave that guitar back to Johnson and then all of a sudden Johnson when he played it uh, he was suddenly able to play it beautifully and the way this the legend goes something either was exchanged verbally or non-verbally but the idea was that uh, that in order for him to be able to play that that instrument now and give him his 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 life wish like everything he wished for was just for one thing to be able to master that guitar now in order for him to do that he would have to sell his soul to the devil in this case this very large black man representing himself in other words this very large black man and Johnson said yes he did so and then that's how he was able to come back after those six months and then uh, start taking things from there but again with a classic deal with the devil um, he probably at that point if you follow this urban legend he probably contracted some kind of disease in this case that syphilis and it and it shortened his time period so that way the devil could claim his soul as quickly as 
possible. So, uh, so at least that is the urban legend somewhere in this U.S. Because even now, there's I think three or maybe four, if you can count it, three or four, and this is growing. It seems like famous locations that have become this so-called crossroads. You're looking at some of the pictures of them here, in fact, because those lyrics. And I saw those lyrics online, and I was trying to examine them. They don't again, like they're very. Uh, obtuse like they don't say anything about the devil they don't say anything about selling his soul instead he alludes to it again like when he says he went to the crossroad he fell down on his knees uh, he was asking the Lord have mercy if you please something along those lines and then that's when uh, standing on the crossroad uh, trying he sees like the rising sun going down again alluding to some darkness and then he said I believe in my soul that the, that 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 he was speaking to someone that it is sinking down uh, that is like the few the, the people that analyze these lyrics that's his attempt through this song to elude the location that he was at in this case these crossroads which is just some place where two roads meet and in, in, in there in Mississippi if you can believe one of those locations and then that's where he sold his soul to the devil now as far as reality and uh, like a real life basis though of what truly happened there was this research done uh, by somebody named Bruce Conforth and he stated that it seems like this uh, that that all that stuff is just pretty much just as a way to sell records. And there, uh, there was reading an article from N uh, NPR and one of the uh, marketing the uh, people, one of the marketing musicians for his 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 records, even to this day, state you know he unabashedly states that yes, I mean that's the kind of stuff that sells. Whenever you create a story like that, the idea that someone gained such talents by selling their soul to the devil and then their life was claimed shortly thereafter because of it. You can't help but think that, you know, the yes, that stuff sells, so they're not going to necessarily dispel those notions. And so in this case, that guy, that Bruce Conforth, who did the investigation, he surmises, though, that it's, that it's a much more low-key, non-interesting reason for why Johnson suddenly mastered all this stuff. And that because he apparently partnered during those six months with a guy named Ike Zimmerman. And then he, in in some cases, practicing at graveyards, if you could believe that, which which it does seem a little eerie, but when you hear this reasoning, why it makes sense, they practice at graveyards, several graveyards throughout multiple parts of the pounds they were in because it was quiet at night. Nobody would be able to disturb them. They could practice into the wee hours of the morning if they wanted to. And then it was during that time period that he learned how to play the guitar from this guy, Ike Zimmerman. And then Ike Zimmerman eventually followed him back uh, towards, I guess, wherever uh, Robert Johnson was heading back after his return trip. And that's it. Like that's it. That seems to be the true story as to why he suddenly came back six months later with a much better playing on the guitar as opposed to say selling his soul to the devil but as always this stuff sells I mean um, it, it's like the notion you know how sex sells here in this case where you're dealing with something supernatural something paranormal the devil himself selling your soul um, and then having a, a tragic death afterward that stuff will definitely keep selling records to this day as opposed to realizing that he just basically learned the guitar from somebody for six months and realizing you know that that's not going to sell anything at all but that's it that's pretty much all the info tied to robert johnson and selling his soul to the devil the urban legend that still continues to this very day very mysterious guy at the very least because again not much info known about his early life very very young life not much info known um, even about his how he died let alone where he's buried at and then of course this urban legend that came about with him learning the guitar all fascinating info so but if anybody has anything else to share anybody been to one of those famous crossroads very influential magic, uh, musician uh, like Keith Richards cites him as the biggest influence and then also Eric Clapton does as well so very fascinating I mean this guy dying so young but still to this day influencing people to this to the very very popular musicians to this day a hundred years later very very fascinating uh information so all right everybody thanks again as always take care